There are some things I may not know. There are some things I can go, but I am sure of this one thing. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. My God.
Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Some people say, I don't know if I ever got saved. Not what you did. Right. <laughs> you ever talk to somebody and say, are you saying, well, I think so. Well, they this isn't a think so, maybe so. Right. Salvation is an oh so. Right. I said, I know he's real. Yeah. I know I'm on the right road. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 We don't we don't all the time get Thomas and our daughter and son <laughs> around to, to sing me. Since they've been at Plaka five years, they've been pastoring Plaka. Five years. That's a long time. When you get as old as I am, that's a long time. Say yeah. so amen, somebody. Amen. But when they're together, you know, I just love to hear them. Amen. Yeah, I, you know, both of them are serving the Lord. One's a pastor's wife, the other's a musician, singing, preacher here. Amen. And uh, I, my grandkids, every one of them's here, but Anna and Ethan, amen. Amen. Hey, 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 Where's he? Oh, he's back gone. I can't see too good back there, son. <laughs> he took both hands up like I'm here. Don't, don't say I ain't here, amen. And uh, I said, you know that's an honor. Amen. Not everybody can say that. Amen. Not every preacher can say that. Amen. You say when you brag, yeah, brag on Jesus. Because I couldn't say one of them. Amen. 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 I, they're working for the Lord. We appreciate them. And, and they're going to sing. I don't know they're going to sing. Amen. You know, when they were little, I used to listen to them fuss and fight. They're in the 40s now, I like to see them sign. <laughs> we still fuss and fight. They still fuss and fight. That's my kids. Can I tell you the humor story? I may have told it before right here, but they were little in, in the Waltons. Remember the Waltons on TV? Every night, they said, Good night, Jim Bobby. He said, Night. Good night, Mama. Night. And you know, it went all through the whole family. And so they got a big argument, a fuss, and a fight that day. And we laid in bed, Tina. She was not been about ten years old. She said, "Good night, Dad." Or Mama, Mama said, "Good night, Good night, Dad." I said, "Good night, Tina." She said, "Good night, Thomas." He didn't answer. He was mad. <laughs> the little fella in that room. Playing. She said, "Good night, Thomas." He still wouldn't answer. And she spoke up, and I like to laugh myself off the bed. She spoke up and said, "That's all right. You got to love me to get to heaven." Yeah. <laughs> You might not want to speak to me, but you got to love me to get there. Amen. 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 Somebody say, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, man, they don't Thank you. 
him. Amen. He's better to me than I am to him. Amen. Amen. You say that. Amen. Did somebody say he's better to me than I am to him. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. Mitch is the only pastor we got with us tonight from Black. Amen. And we want to stand up and say something about his uh, about his wonderful father-in-law <laughs> and the Lord. Stand. Well, boy, God is good, ain't he? I appreciate my father-in-law, I really do. I, I really do. He's, he's there for me when I need a shoulder to go cry on. He's there for me. He's talked to me through a lot of things. Most of all tonight, I'm, I'm glad to be saved. Amen. You know, the doctors, they can take your heart out. They can fix your heart. But it takes God to keep that heart pumped. Yes, Went to see my, my friend, my cousin in the hospital today. Normal procedure, Monday. His heart didn't start back up. My God. Jesus. They got him on a pacemaker right now. Glory. And I'm standing there, Jesus. I said, we just talked Friday. Mm -hmm. He said, Mitch, he said, if that pacemaker stops, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. All right. He said, my heart didn't start back up. He said, I need a little prayer from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Sock my heart back yeah. in the river. Yeah. Yeah. And it just hit me. I'm standing there and said, man can create this thing, but God can fix this thing. Yeah. 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 I love you, Christian. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, folks, if you're not certain where you're going to end up, you better get it right tonight because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen. 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 Sister Linda Baldwin, boy, she blessed us here this week. Yeah. Hey, but give her a hand as she comes and this story. If you want this week's tape, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And uh, just a donation on the ask. If you don't have that, get it. Sign up anyhow. Amen. Bless them, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God's good to us. Amen. You that were here Sunday night, maybe I mentioned it also Monday night, I'm not real sure, and asked you to pray for the situation with our son. God moved in that situation and showed mercy. I thank God for that. I thank Him for doing that. He didn't have to, but He did. And I appreciate your prayers. I know where my help comes from. The psalmist said, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I know where my help comes from. And I appreciate him helping me. Like Brother Ronnie said, he loved me when I didn't love him. He was good to me when I wasn't good to him. And even in my weak moments and my failing times, he's still faithful. He's a faithful God, and I love him and appreciate him. My heart goes out to people that don't have him in their lives. I really pity them. And many of them might not want my pity, but I pity them because they're missing out on what you and I are enjoying. I, I'm enjoying being a Christian. It's not a burden. I don't wake up every morning and say, oh, no, I've got to feel good today. Oh, no, I can't do this and I can't do that. I'll wake up knowing this is a brand new day of life. And enjoy the blessing of the Lord. For the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he added no sorrow with it. Amen. Just a joy to be with you. I appreciate everything that Sister Brenda and Brother Ronnie are doing for us. Feeding us the accommodations you and the church have provided. And the good fellowship. And most of all, the way the Lord has ministered in these altars. You want to make me happy is just let somebody begin to cry, pray, and seek the Lord. Now that is worth more to me than all your offerings put together. Because I want to see people receive from God. And when they're receiving from God, I know they're getting something eternal in their life. It's not just momentary. And thank you for your offerings. God bless it back to you. Look at Psalms chapter 46. Psalms chapter 46. There are only 11 verses in that psalm, and I want to read all 11 verses. I'm not going to preach, but uh, from one, taking my thought from one, but I want to read that whole psalm. Now, in my studying about this psalm, they said they thought this was a song that a virgin female choir sang to the male choir. Now, I can't prove that to you. I've just read that. But I know this, whoever was singing and whoever wrote this psalm was certainly recognizing who God was and what God was. 
Because they said in verse 1, God is, and they didn't say my, they said our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. He's, he included all three verses there recognizing God. Then he starts something else in verse 4. He said, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered His voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Another pause. Then he starts another thought. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations He hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Now before you sit down, verse 1, just a short verse. I want you to read it with me three times before you see it, if you don't mind. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Thank you for reading. Thank you for standing. Now just reading, that made me want to shout. And I'm glad for a writer that knew God. And knew what God was in their life. But taking verse 1. And not only verse 1. But I'll include the other four verses, three verses with that one. But verse 1 where he said that he is not only a refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Right. I'd like to talk to us tonight about what about now. What about now. Amen. A very present, very means speedily, yeah. present meaning right now, ready, has appeared or come forth, exist to help us, to aid us, to assist us in the time of trouble, in the time of adversity, in the time of distress, in the time of affliction, in the time of pain, in the time of grief and suffering. Whatever we're going through, the writer said, He is right now ready to be there to help you and I. Amen. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel so assured that I never go through anything without Him being there to help me. I'm glad for His presence. But I want to speak to us tonight about what about now? I could ask Brother Ronnie to stand, Sister Brendan. I could go all over this congregation tonight. Taking each one of you and say, Sir, ma'am, would you stand and tell us about something that God has done in your past? Maybe something phenomenal, something miraculous, something that was totally impossible. Or the way God ministered in your life in the past. Every one of you could tell us of something that God has done for you in your past. And you still remember it tonight. I do. I could write a list and I'm sure I wouldn't get all of them covered, but I could have a pretty long list of things that God has done in my life and mine and Brother Baltman's life and our family in the ministry. And every one of them are dear and precious. I never want to take God's blessings for granted. I'm still thanking God today, weeks later, after our son had the accident that he spared his life. 
nothing but a miracle of God kept him from being killed. I can name other things and I love to reminisce. Maybe it's my age. Some say it is. I don't know. But the older I get, the more I like to reminisce over the past and remember good things, especially good things that God has done in my life. Amen. He's always He's already done so much in my life, in your life. If we started praising Him and thanking Him right now, we would never be able to praise Him nor thank Him enough for what He has already done in our lives. And I thank you for those blessings. We have Bible examples of what God did. Uh, we have examples of men and women that came along after a cross day and after the disciples day. Phenomenal things like Smith Wigglesworth. His wife died and he came home and he just spoke life back into her. And she said, Smith, why did you call me back? I was in such a wonderful place. And he released her and she went home to be with the Lord. People like Jack Cole, I've told this before, had a campaign of jet revival. And on this particular night, it seemed like the enemy was trying to interfere, disrupt and hinder the flow of the service in every way that he possibly could. PA, PA said wasn't working properly and one thing behind the other. So after the service was over, dismissed, and he was sitting out back on the a tailgate of the truck that he carried some of his supplies in, he heard a little voice saying, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, it looks up. Here comes a little girl with braces on both legs. And that little girl said, Mr. Cole, am I too late? Said, I wanted mom and dad to bring me to the meeting. You to pray for me. Said, I believe Jesus will heal my legs if you'll pray for me. He said, no, honey, you're not too late. And so he laid his hands on her and prayed for her. Then he said, take those braces off. And she started to sit in one location. He said, no, I want you to sit right here where I was sitting in the devil's lap. Amen. Because discouragement was there all around him. She took the braces off, jumped off the back of that uh, truck and went running back to her mom and dad. Mom, dad, I, I wasn't, we weren't too late. Said God is sealed and God miraculously healed her legs. We can remember phenomenal things that God has done. Brother Carl Giles, a mentor to me and Brother Baltman. He was the one that influenced Brother Baltman to be saved. Because Brother Baltman had gone to a nominal church and he had gotten under conviction, did not even know what it was. Was crying, him and some more teenagers crying because God dealt with his heart. And they came down to the altar. No one instructed them in praying. All they did was just tell them we're going to take you to the church, sprinkle them, and told them they were ready for heaven. He would have died and went to hell believing a lie. Are you hearing me? But God put a man right there beside him on his job. Began to speak to him about being saved. Invited him to a tent revival. He came to that tent revival and God gloriously saved him. Later sanctified him and filled him with a sweet Holy Ghost. Amen. But God is wonderful. Brother Carl Giles uh, went to preach a service at a church out in the rural area, country area of Georgia line and Alabama line. Came out of the church that night so foggy, could not see one thing. It was so foggy. They begged him and Sister Giles, please stay with us. Don't go out in this weather. They said, we've got to. I've got babies coming in the morning. She said to babysit, Brother Giles must go to work. We've got to go home. They said, just pray for us. Sister Rose Trailer, blind from birth. I lived just a mile or so down the road. Her and her old maid, they were both old maids. Her sister, Martha, and then her mom and dad till they passed away. Then Martha passed away, put Rose in a assisted living. But Rose had a prayer closet that had a shed built out. From the side of the house, there was an old wagon. Under that shed, that was Rose's prayer closet. She'd yeah. go out the door, climb up in that wagon, and pray for hours out there. So when they got home that night, Rose climbs up in that wagon, and she prays to God, releases her, that brother and sister Giles were all right. Prayed till they went home. Next night, came back. Said, I don't know who prayed and who all prayed, but said, 
uh, when we pulled out on that highway, there were two bright lights on each side of our automobile shining down the highway in that thought, and we saw clearly all the way home that the fire was there. Oh, we could go on all night. Isn't it wonderful what God has yeah. done for us? Thomas and Tina saying, ain't God good? God's been good to us. Amen. He has been good to us. And I, I don't ever want to cease to tell it. I'm not ashamed of what he's done in my life. I'm not ashamed of who he is. I'm not ashamed of his word. I'm not ashamed of his amazing grace. I'm not ashamed of his long-suffering gentleness. I'm not ashamed of the sweet Holy Ghost and his powerful right. service. Amen. Right. But I'm like one writer. The past is valuable to you and I as a God post. But it's dangerous for us if we make it a kitchen post. And that's all we can live on is what God has done and we stay there. Right. What about now? Well, Sister Bowman, I don't live in the past. I'm one of those that's optimistic. I'm looking for the future. I've got my sight set on what's up ahead. Nothing wrong with that. But we don't have the past. It's gone. And we don't have the future. It's not come yet. All we have is now. I said all we have is now. We can make plans for the future. But some of those plans may be divinely interrupted. God can just put his finger on my heart. It would never be beat another time. Or God could just stop my breath and I'd never draw another breath. I don't know. All I've got is right now. What about now? What about God and right now in your life? Well, I wanted to do so and so tomorrow, but what about now? I remember when it did so and so. That's all right. That's wonderful. But what about now? I'm telling what about now? We have a God, he said in this chapter, that is a very present hell in time of trouble. He's a right now living God. You don't have to humor him. He is not like some church folks. You have to beg them to come to church to services and rule. You just about have to pay them to be faithful. Amen. You have to just wait and see what kind of mood some folks are in. They may come in and speak to you tonight. Tomorrow night they might, might walk six aisles over to